Jeff out Gilbert. I did my gym. do not know me I've been involved in network marketing for over 40 years I share a lot of what I've learned in my journey on these live calls I started in this business totally broke sold a junk truck to get started put $200 into my business and last and uh, so here's the thing uh, this is something that you know you might want to share on your page to your downline who always says I'm not getting results uh, Natalia, nice to see you from Russia. Uh, and Christy from Savannah, nice to see you. And uh, Rajendra from Northeast India. Okay, you're the furthest one out. <laughs> Good to see you on the call. Anna, nice to see you. Um, so, um, you hear that and you might feel that. You know, you're, you're in the right company. You have the greatest products that you believe in. The compensation plan is totally awesome. The success stories in your company are there. I mean, you see people at convention, they're sharing their rags to riches stories. And you've been hearing this and hearing this, but you're not getting the same results. You're not getting the results you need. Why is that? You know, because when you look at the people that are successful, why are they different from you? Some are tall, some are short, some are thin, some are not so thin. <laughs> some are outgoing, some are very reserved kind of people. Some good looking, maybe some not so good looking, some young, some old. So then what's the, what's the formula? Why is it they can succeed, they get great results, and you don't? And I'm not saying everybody on this call is not getting great results, but this, is, this call is for those people who are not getting results. Because I can tell you right now that my first um, 14 years in network marketing, I didn't have fantastic results, great results because I treated it like a hobby. It's in my book, by the way. If you don't have my book, it's on Amazon. It's called Reaching the Peak. Reaching the Peak. And so in that book, I share that, that I wasn't having results. And I can tell you that when I started with my last company 20 years ago, everybody that joined me were people that never had any significant results in network marketing. They've been involved, uh, some of them, but they didn't have incredible results. Kathy, nice to see you from Australia. I knew she would show up. Okay, you're the furthest one out. <laughs> Good to see you on the call. <laughs> Just hope nobody from New Zealand shows, right? <laughs> um, so that, that, that's, that's so frustrating, isn't it? It's like, okay, what it, then what's, what is the formula to this thing? I mean, what have you got to do? I mean, if, if there isn't a 
unique, spectacular person, no superman, no superwoman, if that's not what it takes, then what is it? And what determines it? Who determines it? And those are questions that come up a lot. There really is. The fact of the matter is, there's not better people out there. I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to, when you go to your convention and you say, and you see the people, same, same people, and sometimes it's not the same people, but someone's getting on stage and they're sharing their rags to riches story and you're saying, oh my gosh, why not me? Why not me? What's wrong with me? Does anybody relate to that out there? I guarantee you, if you don't relate to it, a lot of people in your team relate to it. They wonder, why not me? The fact is, you don't have to be unique. The fact is, you don't have to be some spectacular person. You know, I, I illustrate it like Roger Bannister. How many of you have ever heard of Roger Bannister? Roger Bannister was the first person who ran the mile in four minutes. It had never been done before. Never been done. Now, Roger wanted to do it because it had never been done. So he learned something. And certainly you have to run, right? You have to practice running regularly, right? If you're going to do this. But that wasn't enough. And that's not what made him reach that mile in four minutes. He had to make the shift first in his head. He had to do it first in his head before he could do it with his feet. And that's the story. And that's what he had to learn. In other words, he had to totally commit to it. Now, he didn't have any examples of people who did it before, right? See, it's a lot easier when you have those examples. Because after he was the first one to do that, to run the mile in four minutes, guess what? In two years, 37 other people did it too. In two years. Two years after that. Now, why, could, why did those people not do it before? Why was it Roger? See, that's what I want to talk about tonight. Because the difference is not working harder. If he got out and just ran more, that would not have changed things. Your working harder is not necessarily going to change things. I mean, hard work does pay. I agree. But I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people that work hard in network marketing, but they don't get results. That's not enough. Not enough at all. So the thing about it is, it's not that you're bad. Not at all. The difference between unlocking your potential, and that's what we're talking about here, un unleashing you, unlocking your potential, is not working harder. It goes back to something that I wanted to share, and um, I'm going to show it to you in this. And guess what? I reversed my screen. So if my gym looks different, that's why. <laughs> but I took my little, my son's board with me down here. And you can see that. Get it over there. This is why most people, um, well, let me just rephrase that. What you're looking at here is basically the process of what creates certainty and belief. Certainty and belief in what you do. This is what Roger had to master in order to run the mile in four minutes. He had to get this done in his head before he could get it done with his feet. You got to get this done in your head before you can create the results in your business that you want. See, here's the thing. Potential. Potential. You have incredible potential. It's not that you need more potential. That's not your problem. The potential is always there. You have to take, I keep wanting to do this. I'm so, I'm not used to doing things in reverse. You have to take action. That's the thing. If you take action, then you're going to get results. 
And then if when, once you get results, that affects what? Your belief and your attitude. Then your belief and your attitude affects what? Your potential. Now here's the problem. The problem with so many that come into network marketing is they do have potential, but here's what the problem is that in the past, when they took action, they weren't committed. As I explained in my book, Reaching the Peak, because I was part-time for the first 14 years, I wasn't totally committed to it. I didn't work it with certainty and commitment. So my action was rather weak. So how did that affect my results? Well, that is my results, it's weak. Then how did that affect my belief, my attitude? Well, you know, I don't, you know, this works for some people. Maybe I, I'm just not an outgoing person, salesperson. I don't know. I guess I just don't have what it takes for this kind of a business. I don't know. That How does that f affect our potential? Our potential is weakened. It's weakened. And this cycle goes on all the time. I see it all the time. in these people that hop around in different network marketing companies. Yeah, I'm on my 15th company, you know. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if it works. I don't know. Last 14 weren't, yeah, they weren't good at all. I mean, they, but here's the truth. The truth is, what was his action? Because when you ask him, well, you know, did you give it any time? Well, I really didn't have time because, you know, I mean, I got a J-O-B. And after the J-O-B, well, then, uh, you know, I got, I, you know, I like to golf. I'm no good at it, but I like to get out on the golf course, whack the ball around, you know. I think I tear up the golf course and all that, and they don't even want me out there, but what the heck, I do sort of like golf, you know, and after that, well, I like to watch this series uh, every night when I get home, you know, when I get home, I get on the couch, you know, get the remote and just kick back, you know, and so, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't really have a lot of time for the, for my network marketing MLM business and all that, I, you know. I, I mean, I knew it was gonna be that way, it just wasn't gonna work out for me. Those were the results. Those are the results. The belief now, the belief in attitude is, yeah, I'm on my 15th company now, you know, we'll see, I don't know. I don't know if this stuff really works, affects our potential, our potential is weakened. See, do we understand what, what's happening here? So the thing about it is, what do we have to do here? That's what we want to talk about tonight. See, many of you know my uh, story that when I started, or rather, excuse me, when I committed to this business, in other words, my first 14 years was absolutely part-time. I wasn't, the kind of action I took wasn't an action of a person that was determined to make it work. It was a hobby. I liked playing with it. And that's what I did my first 14 years. When I lost my main source of income, my business, my main accounts, my two main accounts at that time, I had no money coming in. Then I reached something that's called threshold. Threshold. That's when you go through an emotional experience when you say, I've had it. I've had it. I am done. I will never, never, ever come back here again. It's sort of like the movie Gone with the Wind when Scarlett O'Hara, after the Civil War, she goes back to, to, to her farm, to that beautiful house that is now, you know, there's, it's in bad shape and there's no food. She's trying to find a turnip in the ground and she finally takes a, a lump of dirt and she holds it up to the sky. And that's the most incredible moment in the entire movie, which I think is four hours long. I forgot, <laughs> four hours long. Anyway, and she holds her hand up to the sky and she says, so help me God, I will do whatever it takes, but I will never ever come here again. I'll never be here again. See, that's called threshold. I'm gonna tell you, you know what's created out of threshold? Astronauts. Uh, conquerors, um, people like Cortez who went to Mexico 
from Spain, loaded up his boats with a few hundred men, and he went to conquer, what, six million people? How does a few hundred men conquer six million people? No one had ever conquered the Aztec Empire. Anybody tried? Killed, dead, all their armies. Cortez shows up, unloads his boats, and when the sun's going down, he orders the boats to be burned. And to the horror of his men, when they're looking at those ships going up in flame, he looked at him, he said, guys, it's like this. If we're going home, we're going home in their boats. We either conquer or we die. See, that's the thing, is getting ourselves in a position where we quit giving meager results and we make a commitment to the business. We make a commit. It's not about working harder. But here's the other thing, too, that I want you to understand. Again, we talk about in this example here how belief is created. How belief is created. It's taking our potential, we have potential, and then we take action. We get different results that affects our belief. But here's the important thing. You ask anybody who's ever achieved anything great, they had the belief of certainty. They had already arrived. I saw Anthony Robbins do this on a, it was incredible. As a matter of fact, that illustration came from his book, Unlimited Power. Hey, Stephanie, good to see you. Um, but the thing is, certainty is like I share in my book, Reaching the Peak. Because every Sunday when I was totally broke, trying to get my business going, I was totally committed. I was committed to showing up differently. And so on Sunday, I would go down to Dream Street and I'd walk around those beautiful mansions where all the rich people lived. Some of them were built just before the Civil War. For those of you that don't know American history, that's, you know, before 1860 or right around that. Anyway, I would walk down those streets looking at those incredible estate homes. And I used to think, yes, this is the way it's going to be. And this is the way my life is going to turn out. And that house with the pillars, yeah, I'm going to have one just like that. And those gardens, those roses, those perennials, yeah, and I'm going to have a gardener too. That Mercedes, yeah, and I'm going to put a BMW next to it. And I would do that every Sunday. See, I had already arrived. I was piss poor broke. <laughs> piss poor broke, as we say in the South. But I had already arrived and I knew it. Is that really the way it turned out? Well, read my book, Reaching the Peak. Yes, in 18 months, I moved into a beautiful historic house that was built in 1860 and it did have the pillars out front. Yes, the gardeners came later. <laughs> I'm telling you, but how does that happen? Because you've got to create certainty before you can get those very things that you want in life. You have to accept it that you already have arrived. That Again, that affects everything. That affects because belief, belief affects Potential. Your potential gets greater. When your potential gets greater, so does, you, so does your action. That affects your results. I got to get used to this board doing it backwards. That affects your results. Then that affects your belief. Then it goes back up to your potential. It gets greater. Then your actions get greater. Your results get greater. Your beliefs get greater. So the thing about it is, circumstances that moved me to do that. That's true. That it moved me to do that. So my back was up against the wall like Cortez and his men against the Aztec empire, right? But here's the thing. Most people that join, their back is not going to be against the wall. 
I, I, I'll give you that. Your back may not be against the wall. And I'm not saying that you have to fall on hard times in order for you to be great at network marketing. You don't. You don't. I don't want you to fall on hard times, okay? What I want you to do is do that cycle, but do it differently. Do it differently. Show up differently. That's what I want. So here's some action, action steps that we can take. I'm going to talk about four. The first thing to do is find your why. The second, expose yourself. No, excuse me. Second is create new daily habits. Third, expose yourself to the right kind of people, the people that are doing this. And the fourth is commit to personal growth. So let's, let's talk about it. Find your why is number one. Find your why. And don't tell me it's your product, please. I mean, if an autobiography is going to be written on your life when you're gone, what's the first chapter going to be? She loved her product. She loved that shake. <laughs> no. When we talk about our why, it's got nothing to do with our products. It's got nothing to do with our company. It's got nothing to do with our compensation plan. And I'll tell you what, if you get good at this, it's got nothing to do with money either. That's one thing I've learned. So the thing is, your why is what you've got to tap into. Now, you may not know it. You may not know it. Let's just say that you don't have the house you want. You don't have the car you want yet. So now you're really fixed on that. But I'm going to tell you, if that's as far as it goes, your success is going to be very limited. You might become a six-figure in income earner. I'm going to tell you, though, the seven-figure earners, they're driven totally different. Totally different. Because if you get your house out of the way, the car out of the way, let's say you already got those things. You don't hope for them anymore. What is your motivation then? What is driving you every day? What is driving you? You know, I, we, I spent the weekend giving clothes away. <laughs> Helping a lot of people in need with clothes, right? I've got a friend. We go, we go down to the... Uh, to the uh, uh, jail and try to help people out that are in jail. Their, their lives are a mess. So that's what I do on some volunteer days. The thing about it is you've got to tap into what really, really drives you. And I know, and there's nothing wrong with planning to have a nice house, a nice car or whatever, you know, those things that you want, that's good. But I'm saying if you want something greater and you want to become something bigger than that, then you got to tap into what that is. And if that's a mission, going out and, you know, serving and helping people, if it means opening up a soup kitchen in a homeless area of the city, whatever drives you, something that, that, that's mostly going to benefit others and not yourself then you got to tap into that and tap into that why. If you're a, a mother that, you know, you work hard, your husband works hard, but you just, you just don't have the time or the quality time with your children. You want that. You want to get free of that job so that you can really be a professional parent. I mean, you really want to give your, your life to your kids. That's an awesome why. And when you share that with people, when people say, oh, so you're in, one, you're in one of those, okay, you know, why? Well, I love my shake. <laughs> Boy, we do that. You know, people post that stuff on their page. People are going, ah, oh. every time they see them post. And what do they do? They just take their phone, keep going, keep going. They go right past, past that page because the person's always talking about the products. They're always talking about the ingredients. No one cares. No one's interested. But when you share what you're passionate about, 
things that really have value, things that really resonate and connect with people, then you got, the, then you got their attention. So find your why. That's first of all. Second is develop daily habits to get your business built. Develop daily habits. I'm going to tell you, most people's habits are lousy. They'll walk into their room where they work, where they make their phone calls. Well, I think I ought to clean my desk. Yeah, I need to clean my desk. Hey, honey, is there any furniture polish? Can you can bring it over here, please. Uh. <laughs> oh, bring a dust rag too. You know, I'm going to work. <laughs> oh, get on Facebook. Oh. Look at her cat. Isn't that pretty? She's got the most beautiful cat. I'm going to comment on that cat. We get involved in all those non-productive activities. Here's the thing. We've got to look at what we're doing and we got to develop the right habits. A habit takes, they say, at least two months to develop. They say, actually, they call it new behavior. They say it's actually 66 days to be exact. I don't know how they determine that, but they do. They come up with that. And I'm reminded of that when I, when I, and it depends on the people too and how extreme it is, right? Because some of the people that I've gone, even gone down, volunteered to go down to the jail to help, help those people, they're re, they're, they just come back. They're habitual criminals, I guess. I mean, just incredible. You know, it's just share a quick story. One guy that, I, I was talking to, I was trying to figure out, okay, when he was out of jail, trying to help him to, you know, he's got a job. Okay, great. Awesome. He's got a problem with drugs. Okay. Don't buy any drugs with your money. Okay. Because then the second problem is stealing because you got to support the drug habit too, right? Because a lot of times you don't show up for work, you get fired, right? So, okay, got a good solid job, great. Um, not stealing, awesome. Then he goes into the drugstore and decides to buy over-the-counter medicine that if you take enough of it, you really get buzzed. So he wasn't buying Coke or marijuana, but he's doing that, right? Then what does he do? Walks into a t-shirt shop. Steals a t-shirt, gets arrested, his parole's been violated. Boom, he's back. You know, I'm like, okay, you really needed that t-shirt. No, I didn't need the t-shirt. You're right, because you have a habit of stealing. I get that. I get that. Uh, but what led to it first? Drugs? No, you didn't do drugs. You went into a drugstore and you got over-the-counter stuff and took enough of it and you got buzzed and then... There you go. You have to pay attention to what you're doing if you want to change. If you want to stay out of this place, this is what you've got to do. Now, here's the thing. When we look at what we do in network marketing, that's what we have to do. We have to look at our habits. How much time are we really giving to prospecting? How much time are we really giving to following up? How much time do we give to those people we sponsor? To make sure that, you know, they're well-trained, trained enough. Whatever tools you got, whatever Facebook groups you support them with, whatever that is. If it's meetings you go to, fine. Trainings, whatever. Zoom calls, whatever. Whatever you got to do to expose them. But you got to do it regularly and consistently. Regularly and consistently. You got to develop the muscles. You got to develop the habits of doing these things. Not every now and then, but every day. Now, you know, even if it's for 15 minutes, I don't care. Every day. Adding friends to your Facebook, uh, you know, at, of course, work your warm market, but outside of your warm market, are you constantly, intentionally adding people to your friend network on Facebook, trying to get to know people? So that's the thing. It's about the habits that we have. 
those daily habits that we need to execute. I can tell you, that's how I ended up full-time in network marketing because I took part-time jobs. But you know what? Every time I got home, sometimes it wasn't a part-time job. It was an all-day job. When, when I got home, tired, exhausted, have something to eat, then I'd go down the hallway, close the door, start making the phone calls. It's about consistently, consistency, doing, doing these things, developing the habits. So you don't even think about it. It's automatic. When you come in the door, you know what you got to do. And I understand if you're a woman, you know, you come home, you got another job, right? You left one job, came home to another job. <clears throat> and then you got to make food for the children. You might even have to help them on their homework. It's not easy, is it? That's a tough life. You can still do it. See, even with 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, if you were consistent, the results would be incredible in your business. And the thing is, you need to be at an example of this. An example of this. Because when other women can see you do it, they're going to say, wow, she's awesome. I'm going to do that too. Yeah, that's what you want. Now, here's the third. Expose yourself to people who are successful. Now, you might say, well, it's hard to get around them. You know, because they have a high pin level. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to get around those people. Yeah, might be true on some, not all. It certainly isn't with me. I've never had that, you know, in order to talk to me, you have to be at my pin level. <laughs> I just don't have that, that, that arrogant attitude, okay? I just don't find that. That doesn't create good culture in a company or a team. But the thing about it is you can, you, you'd be surprised when you reach out to people, how willing they are. You, you might feel a little awkward because they're so successful, right? Actually, you know, if I find that seven figure earners, many of them are very humble people, really. They understand that they got where they are because they executed this very well. So they took action, they got results, it affected their belief attitude in a positive way, they got more potential. Their potential increased. So, thing about it is, um, expose your people to people like that. I mean, I have people contact me and they'll say, I, I know you're so busy and all that. And I'm like, well, I'm, I've all, I'm always doing things, but I'm not busy. What? I don't know why people think when you become so successful in network marketing, your life is supposed to be chaos. Like it's like you got 10 different phones that you're constantly grabbing and you're talking to all these different people and you're just, no, it's the opposite. The reason why we did this was so we don't do those things, right? But I mean, sure, I talk to people, but my, but my life is not chaotic. So people are, are surprised when I take time for them, but you, they will. So expose yourself. Remember, uh, they, they say that, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to be any greater than the five people that you associate with most. That's the law of association. That's what it teaches. But I don't think it's exactly five people. I don't know who came up with that number. I, I would take issue with that. I would say, what are your top, top five spiritual advisors? If you're a parent... Who are the top five parents that you admire the most? That if you said, well, that's a successful family, they, they've got, they provide a good example, a good model, how to take care of a family. Who would those five be? Or if it was financial or in finance, who would your top five be? If it was in personal development, who would your top five be? Well, with me, Anthony Robbins would be number one. You know, he would be number one. Then I would have others after that. So I, 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 it's sort of like in categories. So keep in mind, do you, do you avail yourself for those, for, uh, you know, for people like that? Do you expose yourself to people like that? So, and then fourth is commit to personal growth. 
if you want to make a difference in these areas here, that's what we're talking about here. So first is find your why. That's how you ignite your potential. And then second, your habits. That affects your action, right? That affects your action, which gives you results. Your belief, your attitude, that it also affects that, but also getting around the right kind of people. And then that affects your potential. And of course, personal growth helps in that area too. So here's some things that we can do. Number one, in finding your why tonight, why don't you take notes on, uh, besides money, besides the house, the car that you want, why would you still be doing this? Why would you do this? Or would you? Is that as far as it goes? If that's as far as it goes, that's as far as it goes. But I, I have to think you want more. I think you do. So, second, when it comes to habits, you know, I want you to analyze yourself and be honest. Where do you need to make improvements? Do you need to do it in prospecting? Do you need to do it in following up? Do you need to do it in attending maybe trainings, getting on trainings, getting your people on trainings? What, what habits do you need to form that you're just, you're just not doing? You get a, again, it's a habit. I'm not talking about action steps that you do every now and then when you feel like it. I remember my sponsor one time when we were in New Zealand, I said to him, I said, I said, Hey, let's do a Facebook live. And he said, uh, I don't feel like it. And my immediate reply was, what does that got to do with it? <laughs> See, when you form the habits, the things that you know you should be doing, it doesn't matter how you feel. You just do it. You're programmed that way. So write down those things that you need to do. And if you want to make some comments and bury your soul, you can do that. Um, you know, that, you know, so, and then here, expose yourself. Remember, expose yourself to people that are successful, that people are, that, that are doing these things. See how that affects you. For example, are you going to any events? Don't, don't limit yourself to just company events. See, the biggest mistake is that a lot of people think that company trainings or even upline trainings on how to be successful in this business is, is all you need. I tell you that's wrong. I'll tell you that's wrong. They can give you a blueprint on what you have to do, but if you don't believe that you can be successful at it, that blueprint doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why? Because of this, what we just talked about. Because if you have a past where you took, took weak action, you got weak results, therefore it created a false belief like the guy I talked about in the beginning. Yeah, this is my 15th company, you know. Yeah, let's well, give it a go and see how it works, you know. I mean, last 14 sort of sucked, you know. This one probably won't be any different, but what the heck, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> and then we have weak potential. That's the reason why company trainings won't make a difference. Your uplines blueprint to success won't make a difference. Because unless you believe it, unless you have certainty. That's why I said when I went on Dream Street, I said, yes, this is how my life is going to be. And this is how it's going to turn out. That's called certainty. So the thing about it is, we need to flush the past and come in this with a commitment. Come in this with a commitment and these four areas are why, and then our habits. We're going to analyze our habits. We're going to expose ourselves to the right people. And again, company events, upline trainings, 
is not going to be enough. It's not going to do it. Go to an Anthony Robbins event. Go to a date with destiny. I'm planning on doing that with my wife. Um, we're looking forward to that. Um, go to events like that. And that's amazing. Uh, and, and, and guess what? What kind of people go to those events? What kind of people do you think go to those events? Some pretty incredible people. And you get to meet them, talk to them, add them in your Facebook, stay in touch with them, get to see what's going on in their life. It's really exciting when you do. And then fourth is commit to that personal growth. Read the books, listen to the books, have the audios, commit to it. And if you do that, just as an illustration, I'll leave with, with the, this is what I do in some of my meetings. And I've done this, I'm not so good at art, but it's okay if you laugh at me. Uh, so this is potential. Here, I'll just, let me do, this is potential. And this is you, and this is where you operate. Okay. But you see, this is your potential. But how we, because of our daily habits, get that right? <laughs> okay, now I got it right. Because of our daily habits and what I talked about, because of not committing, not believing, not having certainty in what we do, because of that, that's how we operate. But that's not our potential. But here's what happens. Once we, once we uh, again, find our why, find our why, our daily habits, we change, and then we get around the right people. And then finally we commit to personal growth. Look at your potential now. You're there. And that is you. You're not in that circle anymore. But that's where most networkers play. So I hope you got value out of that tonight. And uh, you can share this if you did. And again, my book, Reaching the Peak, if you, if you don't have it, get it. It's on Amazon. <clears throat> and leave me a review if you do. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good evening tonight. I think I'm done in the gym. I did what I wanted to do. <laughs> and now I want to wish you a very... Hey, Mindy, how are you? I, yeah, you, I agree with you, Mindy, on that. Thank you, Kathy. Nice to see you, Charles. All of you guys, totally awesome. Everyone, have a wonderful evening. I love all of you guys. I'll catch you tomorrow. Take care.